When we talk about acids and bases in water, our focus tends to be on the hydronium and hydroxide ions. And in particular, we focus on the hydronium ion concentration, recognizing that stronger acids will tend to produce a larger concentration of hydronium, while weaker acids will produce a smaller concentration of hydronium, for example. You might imagine that as a measure of acid strength or understanding the extent of acidity, of a solution, we could just use the hydronium ion concentration directly, and we absolutely could. The problem with that is that hydronium concentration spans a massive range in the types of solutions that we regularly encounter. It can vary, as you see on this slide, from 10 to the negative 14 and even smaller than that at its smallest, all the way up to something like one mole per liter or even larger than one mole per liter. With a range of concentrations this large, we're going to be dealing with exponents most of the time, right? And exponents are a pain to deal with. The numbers we really care about are small, and there's always a 10 thrown in there. They're visually distracting. They're just not very appealing to deal with. We also often deal with negative numbers in the exponents because the hydronium ion concentration is often quite small, especially in solutions of bases. So to get around all of these issues, we use what's called the pH scale. The P operation is the operation of applying the negative base 10 or common logarithm to a number. So we're going to see p actually in a different context a little bit later in this chapter. It's worth noting that anywhere you see a lowercase p in chemistry, it just means take the negative base 10 logarithm. Neutral water contains a hydronium ion concentration of 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter. So any solution with a pH greater than 7, meaning a hydronium ion concentration less than 10 to the negative 7 is what we would consider basic. Here are some benchmarks. One molar sodium hydroxide solution has a pH of 14, household ammonia about 12, milk of magnesia about 10.5, baking soda about 8.5, human blood is a little bit basic but we're getting close to 7, and pure water shows up right at 7 there. Now the scale runs from 0 to 14 but one thing I want to impart is that we can achieve pHs larger than 14. There's no law of nature that says we can't have a hydronium ion concentration less than 10 to the negative 14, right? That's on some level an arbitrary cutoff. Three molar sodium hydroxide solution, for example, is going to have a pH greater than 14. On the other side of the scale, where the hydronium concentration is greater than 10 to the negative 7, we have the acidic solutions. Some examples for you here are one molar HCl, which has a pH of zero, stomach acid, which is about 1.5, lemon juice, wine is about 3.25, tomatoes at about 4.25, etc., etc. Again, on the other side of the scale, we can go below zero. It is possible to have a negative pH, and a great example is three molar HCl as opposed to one molar HCl. The pH of that solution is going to be less than zero. It's actually going to be negative. We can also express the hydroxide ion concentration in a solution using what's called the pOH scale. And here the idea is not to apply the P operator to the hydronium ion concentration, but to the hydroxide concentration. So pOH is the negative base 10 logarithm of the hydroxide ion concentration. And similarly to pH, it most commonly shows up between 0 and 14, although it can go below or above that range. A useful relationship to apply at 25 degrees C is derived from the equilibrium constant for the self-ionization of water. Kw is equal to the concentration of hydroxide times the concentration of hydronium at equilibrium, and thanks to the rapid speed of acid-base reactions, we can essentially assume in this context and more or less all other contexts where we're looking at calculating a pH that we're at equilibrium. If I apply the P operator to both sides of this, I get PKW is equal to pH plus pOH, since the logarithm of a product, the logarithm of this term times this term, is equal to the sum of the separate logarithms. KW at 25 degrees C is 10 to the negative 14, so PKW is equal to 14, and we can thus write at this point that pH plus pOH is always equal to 14. So this provides a highly convenient way to convert, for example, from pH to pOH and vice versa. And in certain contexts, it is actually more useful and, and easier to work 
with pOH. For example, if you're working with a base that generates hydroxide rather than hydronium, you're going to have to go through the hydroxide concentration to calculate pH anyway. So you might as well calculate pOH and then use this relation at the bottom of the slide to calculate the pH from there.